Hello, my name is Jed, in case you didn't know. The channel is J Feather Boondocks. Why? I don't know. So, it has been a while since I've done an update. I've had the 171BH J Feather Micro now for one year and three months, maybe four months. And I just wanted to go through um, all the updates I've done since the last update video that I had. Okay, so as far as the outside on the front, not much has changed. I did make an extra table for the um, blackstone there. It just raises it up about eight, 10 inches and then there's another table underneath it. I mounted the generator on the front since I moved the batteries inside. That is a dual fuel champion generator, 2000 watt. That connector there is for portable solar panels. Again, nothing has changed on this side, on the exterior. You can see my additional solar panels there up top. We'll get to that in a minute. The first major change is in the this outside door here for the bunks. I have turned this into a garage space. And some stuff kind of moved around during travel here, but kind of get the idea there. On the right-hand side, I have hanging storage for all the wires and hoses. Got a metal detector, fishing pole holders, broom and dustpan, battery charger, hose, Little containers for storage there. I got the buddy heater um, for quick heat if I run out of propane or something. That has green tanks in it. So on the left here, I've got fishing pole holders, two fishing poles. This used to be the bunks, uh, bunk beds. I took half of the top one out and all of the bottom one out to make this garage area. Back behind my closet here, sorry if it's hard to tell, but I have an outdoor rug. And then the blackstone griddle gets stored there. And then I have a few other things stored in here. There's a water jug and a collapsible trash bin. And then it's also gonna be hard to see. I have a little storage behind up top here. Keep some reflectix and usually camera tripod. Stuff like that. And then I have my solar panels that I put on the ground out here. There's two of them here, they're 190 watt. They fit up there against the wall. I ratchet strap them in. I leave the Renogy Rover on there full time. Just connect them as I need them. So all that stays tucked away in what I call the garage here. I do use 20 volt DeWalt for all my tools on the road. I have a drill and I have an air compressor and I have a vacuum that I'll show you in a bit here. These nets were in the bunks for storage when you're sleeping there, I'm sure. I moved them to the door here. It works out nice. So that is the garage storage area. Sorry, my movements are wild. I'm not used to this gimbal. 30 amp power cord and an extra extension cord. And I have two smaller extension cords. Light duty cords. Red and black cable, there's solar. And then propane hoses, water hose, adapters. All kinds of stuff in here. There's no cell service out here, so I borrowed a friend's Starlink to try it out. That works pretty nice. I like it. So we're gonna go on the roof now. I'll show you the solar. Hang tight. I'll give you a little view while I climb up there.
Okay, I'm gonna change the view on you really quick here. Okay, going wide angle. So that front right solar panel, that's the original one that came with the unit. I added two more 190 watt solar panels. Sorry, three more, four total. Two on the left here. And I added these vent covers. Basically, there's a lot of reasons to use them, but my basic reason is I can open the vents and in the wintertime and still retain quite a bit of heat without it all escaping so fast. So, I'll give you a little view again while I get down. Uh, that is th four 190 watt panels. So there's 760 watts on the roof. And then two 190 watt ground panels. So that's another 380 watts. And I can't do math well, so that's 1,040, 1,140 watts total, which I've never seen any power close to that. I think the most I've seen off the roof so far is 28 amps coming in. So let's go inside here. Check out what's been done inside. Got some white chicken chili in the slow cooker. So, first thing, once again, this is the 171BH. I raised the TV up probably six inches or so, uh, just because I like to use this side as the head of the bed. And then I added to be some dog fur here, but I added some 12 volt outlets back there and this small inverter with a bunch of USBs on there. There's five USBs and then another 12 volt outlet built into it. So that way I can charge devices and I'll use a little power. The mini inverter basically I got for um, running the electric blanket at night without having to have the big inverter on. So it draws a lot less power. Let's go down here. I took this cabinet door off and made it dog food storage. There's food and water in there for Zoe. And so I added the Ames 4000 watt pure sine wave inverter. I installed the control panel up here. That's all the information it gives you. Right now it is on and it's running the crock pot and it'll also run the Starlink. 4,000 watts is overkill for those two items, way overkill. But that mini inverter I have by the bed um, wasn't able to keep up with the crock pot. It's only 200 watts. So that's why I'm not just using it. This is my lithium setup here. I have three SOK 100 amp hour batteries in back there. I'm running 4 aught battery cables, Victron Bluetooth Smart Shunt, Ames Pure Sine Wave Inverter Charger 4000 watt. That is all mounted in there. Basically, the shore power comes in through that inlet on the wall in the center there, that orange cord, goes into the inverter and then the wire that was in the shore power cord goes into the output of the inverter so the inverter can power everything in the camper. Every outlet and every appliance. So that's there under the rear dinette. Next thing I did is I swapped out the basic thermostat with a digital thermostat here. This one only runs the furnace. Um, this one is lighted and controls the heat better than those analog um, basic thermostats do. Um, so it was nice to swap that out. Get a lot better heat control in the winter time when I need it. So back here, this is where, sorry, this is where the bunks were. This is exactly how the top bunk looked. You can see I've cut it off right there. But I added baskets for laundry. 
and there's a little bit more room on top there for random stuff. These I found I like hanging sweatshirts from. And then below that I've made what I call the closet. A bunch of shelves and hanging clothes. I put a pipe up there to hang some clothes off of. And the shelves. Got dog food and books from trips, maps and stuff, food, um, computer stuff, extra spot there for drinks and stuff that don't fit in the fridge. And bottom one is the vacuum that I use. That's the DeWalt 20 volt vacuum. It's got floor attachments and just the regular hose tubing stuff. Very nice to have in here. And you can see I've added a 12 volt outlet there for fan. So that is the closet area. You can see on the wall there, I've added the Renogy Rover. This is a 60 amp MPPT charge controller. Uh, that's all the information that it shows there. Fridge. Uh, the only thing I've done is I've added these latches. So when we go down the road, these doors aren't going to fly open. They've done that to me twice now, the freezer door especially. Um, I've had hamburger patties on the floor and stuff. So it's nice to get them on there so I don't have to worry about that. The other big change is this Furion air distribution box. Um, originally, the air blew straight down from right here and it was loud and obnoxious. Um, so I found this air distribution box and definitely cuts the noise down, but 80% uh, of the air comes out the back here and only 20% comes out the front here. Um, so that's a little frustrating. Um, the Furion air conditioner is not a good product in my mind, my opinion. Um, I definitely wouldn't recommend it or look for it or um, just a lot of issues with it. And I've tried everything in the troubleshooting manual and online, different places, different people. Um, nothing seems to make it work decent like I want it to. Um, in the summertime, when it's between cycles, um, it gets muggy in here really fast and it you're almost to the point of sweating before it starts again. And I've adjusted that um, thermostat in there. That's not the name for it, there's a special name for it. But I've adjusted that, shaped it, all different things. And it seems like I can make the cycles longer, um, but I can't make them, I can't make them work right for me and my preference. Um, plus I do 90% boondocking and that takes a ton of power. So I'm thinking I'm gonna get rid of the roof air conditioner and put in something else for AC. Uh, it doesn't require as much power. And then I can put a little more solar on the roof as well. Not necessary, but if I'm gonna run a smaller AC, um, the more solar the better, I would say. So, I believe that is it for the changes to the Jayco J Feather Micro 171 BH. Uh, in the future, if I do upgrade my battery bank, uh, my plan is to add up to six more 100 amp hour lithium batteries. And <clears throat> the way that'll work is that battery bank will stay there. The wires will go to the wall underneath this dinette to a bus bar. And then from that bus bar underneath the right dinette and underneath the bed, I will have two more 300 amp hour battery banks. And those wires will all go to the bus bar underneath the dinette table here on that back wall. And then the bus bar will run to the inverter. So everything will have equal length battery cables and... I forgot what I was gonna say. That's okay. Basically, everything's going to have equal length battery cables. I won't have to worry about um, any of the battery banks being charged differently or anything. So I think that'll work fine. That way I can run solar 
run AC off solar um, and battery for a weekend, no problem. Uh, I feel like spending the money on that is better than spending money on a rooftop air conditioner. A better one and still probably be disappointed. So other AC options are like the EcoFlow Wave, which I don't think will be a great fit in this unit. Um, if I turn it on, leave it on 24 seven all weekend long um, in an already cool camper, uh, it'll probably be okay. But if I have to cool down the camper with just the EcoFlow Wave, I don't think it's gonna be able to do it to a comfortable level. So start it cool, keep it cool. EcoFlow Wave will probably work. If I have to cool down a hot camper, it probably won't work. Um, the next thing is a window air conditioner. And I've thought of a few options. Um, I don't want to block these windows. These are pretty much the only windows in this camper. There's a little one over here and of course the door, but I don't want to block those. So I would maybe look at something back here. Sorry, it's dark, but there's a window back there and then maybe piping that AC into the cabin here somehow with tubing and vents. But just a thought, I don't know what's actually gonna happen. Maybe I'll even just pop it in the window when I need it and take it out when I'm done. Make a bracket to hold everything nicely and take it out before I travel down the road. So that is the camper upgrades I've done. Any questions or anything you want to know more about, please let me know. Hit one of those like or subscribe buttons if you want, and we'll see you down the road.